A well-insulated steam turbine operates at steady state with one inlet and two outlets. The properties are given in the table. We got state one listed, state two listed, state three listed. Let's find them on the diagram. One is the inlet, two is an exit, three is an exit. They have the M dot for state one, 15 kilograms per second flowing in. How about the M dot for state two? Three going out and 12 going. Does that make sense or do they have a problem with this problem statement? 15 in, 15 out. Three and 12 is 15, right? What about the pressure in? Wow, it's 4,000 kilopascals. So it comes in high pressure, goes out, mm, still pretty good pressure, five bar or 500 kilopascal or half a megapascal. That's out at state two, out the stream at state two. But at ten, what about at three, state three? It's coming out at 10 kilopascal. Tell me a little bit about 10 kilopascal. High pressure, low pressure? Very low pressure. You would even call that a vacuum. Somebody a little mischievous, it's got a pipe right there, right? Steam's coming out of the pipe. They take a drill and they drill a hole in the pipe. Then they remove the drill bit. There's now a punctured hole in the pipe. Is air going to rush into the pipe or is the steam going to gush out of the pipe? It's 100 kPa out here. It's 10 kPa in the pipe. Out here it's air in the room, like we're breathing. In the pipe it's 10 kPa steam. Holy, you have a vacuum? Where's the vacuum pump? Oh, no, this is all made up. Or do we believe this? Do real power plants run with steam in, in pipes that are less than atmospheric pressure? Yes, it's a state of vacuum in that pipe. It's pure steam. They want pure water. And they don't want air in there, mixed in there. They work hard to get the air that may leak in there or begin in there to get out of there. But you want pure steam in the pipe, and yes, it can be at that pressure. Now notice, they give you a temperature at state three. Guess what that temperature, when they give you a temperature to four significant digits like that, just, just look at it. What's, it. what's it cry out to you? Yeah. Hello, I'm the what temperature? I'm the saturation temperature at that pressure. It's two phase. I forgot the quality. I probably have it written somewhere here. 85%. X is 85%. So it's high quality steam coming out at state three. Take a look at the temperature. The, do you want to touch 400 degrees C steam? No, you don't. Uh, how about 240 degrees C? No, keep it far away from me. Uh, right? So this is very high dangerous things. Okay, these values of enthalpy and entropy, we're going to trust, they look reasonable. All right. Okay. Now that we understand the information given, we ask, we, we, we try to answer these questions. Part A, what is the power developed? How am I going to solve for the power developed? I'm going to pause and I want you to write down the equation to calculate part A. Then if you get that one, move to part B, what's the rate of exergy destruction? And then the part C, what's the exergetic efficiency for this turbine? All right, we do an energy balance, true? Energy balance for that control volume. And after you do a little bit of work, you find that the power out's equal to the mass flow rate in at one, carrying with its enthalpy at one and taking out at two, it's enthalpy at two, and out at three, enthalpy at three. You should do that a number of times for a number of different problems uh, and work it out, okay? Only a few of you had that, but it should be coming uh, more second nature to you. So that's how you calculate the answer for part A. You're given the mass flow rates and the enthalpies, and if you make the calculation, you'll find that W dot is uh, 12, 6, 7, 0 kilowatts. So it's a uh, 12.7 megawatts. Okay, that's a lot of power out of one steam turbine. Now the second part, part B, what is the rate of exergy destruction? You can do the exergy destruction using the approach of an exergy balance. Or you can just say exergy destructions T naught times sigma dot.
and do an entropy balance to get sigma dot. True? Either approach works. Either approach works. Probably coming out of thermal one, your sigma dot's probably a little more appealing to you because you can do a second law of balance pretty quick. Okay, is that equal to m dot one s one? Whoops, m dot. Let me do this. Two s two plus m dot three s three minus m dot one s one. This is the outflow of exergy. It has to be higher than the inflow of ex not exergy entropy. Okay, does that make sense? If you calculate the sigma dot the generation. Uh, you'll get so many 4.458 kilowatts per Kelvin. That the right units? Sigma dot? Kilowatts per Kelvin? Sure. Then we multiply by T naught. T naught, they didn't give it to any T naught was given, right? So what do you assume? 25 degrees C, 298K. And then you can calculate using this equation the exergy destruction rate to be 1,328 kilowatts. Okay. What is the exergetic efficiency? For an exergetic efficiency, it's the, the, ex, the flow of exergy that went into the work. So E dot W out. That's what you want, out that shaft. But it came out of the fluid. It came out of the fluid that flows. But it's like you have two streams. One stream goes from one to two, and the other from one to three. See that? I should change color to show that a little clearer. From one to two and one to three. So what you say is, hmm, this is W dot that came out the shaft. We already calculated that from part A. But what we have is, uh, what came out the, with the fluid is the mass flow rate in the going to uh, through pipe two, that's from one to two this way, see that, times EF1 minus EF2 plus M dot three EF1 minus EF3. Okay, that'll work. But this calculating that is, is a, a hard thing to do. Let's go back and think about this. I have a, a exergy balance equation. All right. Uh, I'm looking at trying to do this without using any more real estate on my screen. I mean, I'd hate to scroll down. But uh, this power, okay, came out of what came out of the fluid stream. So this E dot that came out of the mass fluid streams either went into turning the shaft, producing the power, or was destroyed. True? Does that make sense? So why not use the exergy balance equation to rewrite the denominator such that the exergetic efficiency of the turbine is the power out, hey, that's what we just calculated from part A, right? And the power out divided by the plus the, 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 the destruction. And so when you calculate the exergetic efficiency of the turbine or the second law efficiency of this turbine, you find that it's right at 90.5%.